Hello guys and welcome to Steve Knows. We've got some great virtual reality news stories for you today, but it's a slightly different angle where I'm going to be looking at some incredibly deep stories, some pretty awesome ones and some controversial ones around the virtual reality sector as a whole. But I do have a few games to talk about as well. And sorry about last time, I know there was a giveaway and I put the wrong link down below in the description, but that's all fixed now. And if you want to enter, you can subscribe to the channel and there's a link down below on how to do that. So let's get started on today's virtual reality news. So I wanna take this opportunity to share this with you because it's no secret that I love Halo. And then when I saw this, I just thought it was such gold. It makes me want Halo VR so bad. And that is there is a Halo Master Chief mod for Blade and Sorcery. Master Chief lovers, you've got to try this. I stumbled across this channel called VR Lad, and you got to see the battle rifle from Halo, the energy swords, the magnum, even the gravity hammer. Master Chief's outfit as well just looks spot on. You just go out and just end up slaughtering people left and right. We've seen this before with the Star Wars mod where they had lightsabers. That was pretty awesome. But this one for me is even better. I love love Halo. If you want to see the full video, there is a link down below in the description. So on to the controversial topic. It looks like thou shall not be named, you know what, is actually doing some good, believe it or not, depending on your perspective, I guess. There are a couple of stories as to why I think this. So you may have heard that F8, GDC, there's just events left and right that are being cancelled or affected by this virus. And when I previously covered a story on that, I got comments, comments, and comments and how these VR companies should be hosting their conferences in virtual reality so we can still attend. So it looks like that's actually occurring, but HTC are pursuing this. Even more shocking that that company is being the front runner in trying something new after their, I don't even wanna say. Alvin Graydon had tweeted that the virtual reality industry is being cancelled worldwide, all of these events, and Vive, or HTC, are going to hold the world's first industry conference in virtual reality. It's going to be streamed via Engage on the 19th of March. You're going to have six degrees of freedom in this virtual reality experience as well. You'll have access to top speakers of the conference. There'll be no carbon because nobody's traveling either. It's better for the planet. They've got lots to show off as well since they've got a new product line. So this is a pretty good idea rather than cancelling because they really need to get ahead. This is a stepping stone in the virtual reality takeover. The first of its kind, somebody had to do it, but I hope it doesn't also take away from us actually having real events that we have to attend because these are great for the community, it's great for venting a passion and sharing your, your love for this platform with people all over the world. We already stay at home in our VR headsets all day anyway. And the next story is to do with Facebook. This is still a VR for good because of the you know what, but this one's around Facebook. So this is another big step for virtual reality due to issues with remote working. I know many employers are preparing for a remote working scenario in the event of something terrible happening and this spreads even further. But an employee at Facebook was actually a victim of this issue. And this has now caused Facebook to test their defy distance strategy that they mentioned a couple years back. And as this occurred in Seattle, which is the base for Facebook's augmented and virtual reality research division, it's forced them to try out their prototyped application tools, such as applications that help them for collaboration, for meetings, all with the use of AR and virtual reality technology. And because this isn't feasible for people to be wearing these headsets for eight hours a day, which is just so long, my face hurts on the quest after about an hour to two hours, it's now forcing them to create a more feasible wearable product for enterprise to meet the needs of these situations. They're creating something for themselves. People use the term eating your own dog food or drinking your own champagne. And this situation is going to uncover big problem areas to their products. What works well? What will be instrumental in faster progress? And all of this is being uncovered due to the situation that we've been forced in. So although it's a pain in the ass, it is helping development in some sense. Let me know your thoughts on this situation because it's obviously a topic up for debate. Comment down below, let's have a chat. One that I love, more footage has been released for the title Lies Beneath and it's slowly becoming one of my most anticipated titles for the Oculus Quest and it has the potential to possibly be one of my favorite virtual reality games on the system yet. It's the kind of game I've wanted for such a long time. 
being inspired by Resident Evil and Silent Hill. So there is new footage for this game which shows off a new weapon that you get in the title, a shotgun, and it also shows off some more gameplay that isn't so fast moving like the trailer so we can take in more of what to expect from the game so we can assess the environments, the enemies and things like that. It is looking so good, although I don't know if I'm seeing PC gameplay or the Quest. But with that cell shading style, I've seen it on the Quest before with the game Proteus, looks really good and bold on the system. So I'm expecting the Quest to look pretty similar if that is PC gameplay. But anyway, there's this shotgun blowing things away, blowing away these creatures with nice pumping action, and you get to see that reloading mechanic that just looks so satisfying. This trailer seems to be giving away techniques that they're using to be able to pull off such high fidelity visuals on the Oculus Quest, and that is that if you look in the foreground, you see the enemies and some boxes, but if you look in the background, it's just black. So you only have to worry about what's occurring in the vicinity of the player. This is also a smart design because you can't see too far ahead of you. So enemies just kind of come out of nowhere and it adds that kind of tension and that fear that you want in a horror action title. This game comes out on the 31st of March. Gives me a week to complete Half-Life Alex. This one really interests me. I think it's pretty big. I heard about America's counter-terrorist division using virtual reality to practice drills in the most realistic setting possible. But this is a new one for the military and this is occurring in the United Kingdom. A company called SimCentric have just got funds for a hefty sum of £300,000 to tour and trial out a virtual reality training program called SAFTEC on the Royal Air Force, the Marines and the Army. They will have participants engaging in drills that would have previously been taught via a computer or a orchestrated real life setting. We've all done those training courses where we start a new job and we're just getting asked questions and we point and click. So boring. I don't even know if I remember any of it. So this program is built on the Unreal Engine 4, providing realistic, high definition audio, sensory feedback, and custom training that will better equip our armed forces for life and death situations. The website states many other benefits as well, such as supporting over 30 users at once. Overseas simulation on foreign territory would now be possible in training. Also detailed individual feedback would be possible and available at the point of need, there is on-demand training. So you don't need to set up a training day and you can only have a max of like 10 people that can fit on the bus and things like that. They are targeting combat, vehicle crews, judgment training, leadership development, and dealing with stress. The tour is to gather intel on performance improvements compared to the current method of training and get feedback from the user about their experience, along with a cost benefit analysis. And if all goes well, we could be seeing our armed forces being trained with virtual reality, which is pretty interesting. And would this make gamers a more highly demanded resource in the event of a DEF CON scenario? Interested to see the results of this tour because obviously our national safety is on the line here. But also if our government is investing in this technology and sees the benefit in its training, it opens up more possibilities for virtual reality. Perhaps the next war will be in Pavlov as well and not in real life, that would be much better. Attack on Quest, another side note is that this title I missed last month, but it just got an update, so it's popped up on my feed. And also it seems that this update could have been what some of you had been waiting on before trying it because there has been lots of needed improvements. This is Attack on Quest. Any Attack on Titan fans, this may please you as you get to go inside this kind of arena environment that's blocked off by these huge walls. There are houses scattered around. There's giants walking around for you to kill. And you have to use your zip wire that helps you launch around like Spider-Man around the world using hooks on the houses, on the roofs. And there's a wire for each hand. There's also boosters to help you glide and two badass swords to slice up the enemies. If you are a fan, I do urge you to give it a go and provide some feedbacks to the developers as then we may get the kind of game that we want, one that actually represents that anime pretty well. Let's talk about Half-Life Alex now. So the locomotion debacle has gone down with Half-Life Alex since the gameplay was released and we saw that the way they were playing was that they were using teleportation. But this game footage did have a section where it had up this pause menu where you could see all the ways that you could choose to traverse depending on what your preferences were. I think some people missed this or it caught them off guard and people were commenting saying that they didn't want teleportation. They were slightly confused on how the game was going to work. But it seems like it's even more unique than we initially thought because the teleporting isn't really teleporting. Their teleportation function doesn't work like a teleport where you say, I want to move to that spot and then you just disappear and end up there. Beam me up, Scotty. But rather, it fills in the movement that would have occurred 
to get you to that point. The statement that Valve made in an interview might make this more clear. We have a concept of all the things that are essentially on Alex, and when they are affected, the sounds they generate while you teleport, they are affected by what our traversal figures out. Like if we know that you're going to jump down off a ledge and then move across something, when you do that teleport, the clothing will play that drop down and land sound as you go and stuff like that. So although at the surface to the user, it may look like you're just teleporting, but there's a lot more going on behind the scenes. And if you want the full video, the full take in, there's an interview that just goes so in depth on so many things. I'll put a link down below in the description. And continuing in this interview, I liked how they really understand how the player plays in virtual reality. They stated that in virtual reality, people don't move as fast as they would normally in another game where you just start running and sprinting through rooms. They like to stop and look around and interact. So this concept has really affected how the game was designed. And that makes me even more interested to see how they've actually created this game. I can't wait to get my hands on it. And what was also great to hear is that because of this, asset builders, the people that create all these small pieces, design all these small little assets that we just spread around the place that usually we just run past, they're being rewarded more. There's more value in the efforts that they provide because we actually stop, look around and check out everything. We can actually appreciate the artwork that's gone into the game and I think that's a positive. There's so much in that interview, honestly. If you've got 30 minutes, get some popcorn, put your feet up and just give it a watch. It's pretty interesting, especially if you're in the tech space. So that's it from me today, guys. Thanks for watching Steve Knows and getting caught up on all of this controversial news. I really would like to hear your thoughts. So comment down below, join the giveaway. Thank you to my patrons as well. Happy gaming, guys. Good day.